In this video, you will learn to automatically back up your MySQL databases attached to your WordPress blogs or whatever software you're running. The first thing you need to do is go to SourceForge.net and download the Auto MySQL Backup Script. You'll find a link to that underneath this video. Let's go ahead and go in here and then download Auto MySQL. Okay, and then once you click on that button, you'll find version down here. Let's click on that. And then the window will pop up and just download it somewhere on your computer by clicking the OK button and selecting where you want it to go. Make sure you click Save to Disk. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Now once it's downloaded, right click on the file that's on your desktop do an open with and then open it with wordpad like so this is the source file that we're going to change now the next thing we need to do is go into our cpanel and go and look at our mysql databases there we are so normally in your cPanel to get to it, you'll go to yourdomain.com slash cPanel and then sign in, unless your host is giving you different instructions. Now, find MySQL databases in here. And in this case, we only have one, but you may have as many as you want in here, generally, but it doesn't really matter. Now, the first thing we need to do is set up a username and password for the script to access our databases. And then you got to add this to all of your databases. That way the script can access every database on your server. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new username called Backup. And then we're going to assign this to each of our databases. So we'll call it Backup and Password. Now I wouldn't suggest that you use these particular names. You should give it some sort of a name that nobody can guess. And of course a secure password. You can give it all permissions or you can give it select and lock tables. I'm just going to leave it at all. Now what you would do is you would select all the databases in your list. This is your user list. This is your database list. So we'll go add the first one here. Now you just click create user. And it tells you to add a backup with the password password. Then we go back. Now what we do is we go down here and you'll see we have user backup. And over on this side, we have our database name. So we'll just give them all permissions and add user to database and go back. Okay, now you'll see that underneath this database name, up here you'll see this is our database name. And then these are our users in our database. And this is our backup database that we created. You'll notice that it appended this character set on the front. And that'll be the name of the user ID for FTP. And then it gives the permissions here. Then what you would do is you would do that for all of your databases. You'd leave the user at backup. And then you'd go through this list on this side and do the same thing for each database that's on your server that you want backed up. OK, so we're done with the cPanel side. So let's go back and modify our script now. So we'll roll down here a little bit. You'll see that the first thing it asks us for is our username. Now we'll go back to our cPanel, and our username is the one we just set up. So in this case, it's buck60 underscore backup. So we copy that, and then we come back to our file here. Over top of username, just paste that in there. And the password. In this case, it happens to be password, but whatever you set it to, overwrite this word password here. Host name or the IP address of the MySQL server. Most of the time, it's going to be localhost. However, it could be different. And all you have to do is roll down here and see if you have something other than localhost down here. 
And if you do, then that'll be the name of your host down here. The next thing we need to do is tell it what databases we want it to back up. You'll see here that it had database names DB1, DB2, DB3, which of course are fictional. Now what we need to do is go back to our cPanel and have a look at our database names. Now you can either back them up individually like they say there if you only wanted to back certain ones up. So if we only wanted to back this one up, we would just copy this name in like so, and then we would paste it back in. And we would just paste it in here like so. And then we'd leave a space and put the next one in if we wanted to create a list. If you want to back up all the databases, all you have to do is put all in here and it will back up all the databases for you. Backup directory. Now here we have to go and create a backup directory. So what we'll do Again, let's go back to our cPanel, and then we'll just go back to the home page of the cPanel. We'll go to the File Manager. Then what we're going to do is we're going to put the backup directory in the root directory. This is not accessible to people searching the internet because all of the web docs are in public underscore HTML on many servers or it could be htdocs or whatever it is doesn't matter what we're going to do is we're going to actually create a folder in the root directory and have them in there so what we do is we click on create a new folder and we'll just call it backups just like what it already says in the script but you can name it whatever makes sense to you then we'll create it Then what we'll do, just click on it, and we need to change the permissions on it. So click on the file name, folder name backups, then come up here and click on change permissions. And give the right permissions. Execute. So it reads 777 and change. All right, now if we go back to our script. So backup directory slash backups. That's not quite right. Take the slash out of there. So it looks like that. And then that'll work for us. Now our mail setup. What we're going to do here is tell what we want it sent by email to us. If we just want the log or we want the file sent to us, etc. And what I always do is I have it email me the files. That way a copy will be emailed to me and I don't have to worry if my server fails because I will have a copy of the files on my own hard disk. So what I put in here is I've put files, but you can do it however you want. So I would put files in here. The maximum allowed mail size, so 4,000 is probably five megabytes, which is lots. So you can just leave that alone. Email address where you want it sent to. So you just put your email address in here. So make sure you change that. And that's it. That's all we need to set. Now what we have to do is set up the server side so that it automatically works for us. So what we have to do first is upload the script. Just go to File Manager again, and then we're going to upload the script into the same place, right into our root directory where you can see our backups directory is here. We're going to upload it right into this part. So all you have to do is click on Upload Files, then browse for it on your computer. Just click the Browse button, and then find the name of the script file here. There it is here, Auto MySQL Backup. There we go. So now we just click Upload, and it will bring that script up to our server for us. And then what you want to do is rename it. So here it is down here. Just click on it. Rename it to something else that you want it to be. Just so it's not easy for anybody to find. So we'll go ahead and just call this backup. Make sure you put .sh on the end of it. That means it's a shell executable. 
So whatever you call it, you don't have to call it backup, call it whatever you want, but make sure you put .sh on the end. Like so. Then all you got to do is change the permissions. So click on it. Then go to change permissions. And then we need to give it execute permission. So make sure that these three checkboxes are checked down here. Should read 755 and then change. Now all we have to do is set up our cron job. What a cron job does is make the server run things for us. So let's go and do that now. All right, so go back to our cPanel. And now what we need to do is find the path to our file so that we know where to execute it from. So just go to what's called FTP Manager and click in there. So click FTP Accounts. And then just click Add FTP Account down here. Now here is our path right here. So just highlight this string. Actually, you don't need the slash public underscore HTML. Just copy this part. Then we can go back to the home page. Just click home at the top. Now let's go back to our cron jobs. Find your cron jobs. Click on that. And just click on standard. And then in command line to run, just paste your path in there that you already have and put a slash behind it, and then the name that you chose to rename your backup script. So we called it backup.sh. Down here is where we pick when we want it to run. The way this is set up right now is it will run every day at 3 a.m. If we were to look at this a little closer, time is 3 a.m. Over on this side, we have our minutes. So we could have it run at 3.56 just by pushing the 56 here. And then every day, every month, every weekday. So the way it's set now, it'll run at 3 a.m. every day for us, which is maybe fine for you. But what we want to do is we want to test it first to make sure it works. So we're going to click every minute. Then we're going to click every hour. So what it's going to do is every minute it's going to run this script. So what we want to do is give it an email address that's valid up here. And then... Let's have it send it to us by email. So I'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and put an email address in there. And then what we'll do is we'll save the cron tab. Now what it should do is after a minute's time, it should send us a copy of the files by email. And it should also appear in the backup directory that we created in our root directory. So let's just make sure that happens. Once you verified that everything worked okay, you go back into the cron job and set it for the time you want it to run. And here's what the email looks like that we'll receive. It tells you that it backed up and what size and so on. And it gives you the uncompressed and the compressed size. And then your attachments, you click on attachments, it also emailed you the database so that you have it in your email. All right, so we'll just go to our file manager and you should have got an email, but if it didn't get through or if you want to check before it happened, just go into backups. Now you'll see that it has actually created folders in here so we know that it ran. If we go into daily, you'll, you'll see your database names all in their own folders in here. In this case, we only have one. And if we go inside there, here is our backup file that it will email us. All right, so we know that it's worked. So let's go back and change our cron job. So click on cron jobs, standard. And then all we need to do is change the time that it sends it to us. So we only want it to send us every day at, say, 3 a.m. That's all we got to do there. And then click Save Cron tab. And we're done. Our automatic backup is now set up.